All right, so poelab.com is your friend when it comes to doing labyrinths. Uh, normal lab. That's relatively easy. Okay, so we have to go to Act 3. And here we go. Time for the worst part of the game. Some people like this. I ain't one of them peoples. I only have to do the Crypt and the Ossuary, and then I can do the other two as well. Alright, so top right. So there's maps on poelab.com that you can pull up for this. And what it does is it just gives you the areas of the map on like which direction you're supposed to go, and what's in those certain areas. So like, for example, um, the map told me that I need to go to the top right of this zone. And just because I kind of know the layouts of these zones in general, I have an idea of where I'm going. I kind of just have a little bit of a spidey sense when it comes to that kind of thing. So I need to be going to there. All right, perfect. So this is the first section of the boss. Each of these bosses, this is a Zaro. He has three phases and it just kind of, there's two different phases and then the last one is just everything all combined. I normally don't like doing these early on because they're actually pretty difficult for someone who's low level. Whereas when you're high level, you can just beast through them like this. Yeah, see if I would have done that at level like 27 or 28 or whatever I am when I get to this portion or when I am able to do it fucking die. So here we have two choices. We can go top right or top left, and top right is by far the shorter one. But you kind of have to gauge for yourself whether or not you think that a certain direction is going to take you the right way. So like, this is looking like it'll be the right direction, because there is that, that path off to the right, but I'm not 100% certain that it's going to take me where I want to go, because it's too far to the right. And when, um, when you look at the map, it tells you top right, yeah? So we'll see. See if I made the right choice. I think I did. It looks like I did. This should be Aspirin's trial. Yep. Okay, phase two of Azaro. So he kept two of his conduits because I didn't take them down. These just make him do. You'll see he gains extra freeze damage, he gains freeze chance, and gold, cold damage reduction. So now he's got these lieutenants. And if you don't kill the lieutenants before Azaro, then they keep with him in the next version or the next zone. And they do certain things, like the ice one has a reflect aura. Honestly, a lot of people die to that reflector and they never know that it's there in the first place. Okay, so now we are going to the top right. So, on the map that we're looking at right now, it's showing us that the top right and the top left are both paths, and they're even amount of rooms, but um, thankfully POE Lab is good enough to let us know... Okay, so that's a dead end is good enough to let us know which one is shorter and which one is longer. So in this certain circumstance, the one that takes you to the right is much shorter. So, oh, did that just do nothing for us? So we're gonna go to the right side. But sometimes you get trolled like this and you just have to like take a weird path, such as this one. Now, this is normal lab, so I'm honestly a little bit surprised that there's this many traps on like the standard path. Interesting, normally there's not this many traps. Normally there's no traps that are this difficult, rather, I guess. Oh, we don't even have to go through that. That's a weird layout. That's a super weird layout. What the hell? I don't think I've ever seen one like this before. Remember, we're going to the right. So the lab is something that's super important for you to do on pretty much every single character. It's not something that you can just skip nowadays. Most of the balancing of the game is actually around the fact that you have these ascendancies. So we're going to the right path this time. But yeah, most of the game is balanced around these ascendancies and a lot of people do them just as they're leveling, but I personally feel like as long as you are able to finish the game normally, it's generally better, at least for the Scion, to do them later. Because the first set of ascendancy points for the Scion is actually pretty worthless. Oh, is this a secret? Okay, so these, there's these little secret areas, you can see them by how the, the map lays out. Um, in higher ones, they're much more useful, but you'll see I got pretty much nothing here. Is there another one? Yeah, there's another one. You can see them on the map here. They look like these little zones. Okay, this is a dark shrine. So what this does is it gives you some random effect, yeah? So labyrinth traps are disabled in the aspirant's trial, so that means that in the actual trial rooms now, there's no traps, which is good. On higher difficulties, that would be very useful, but here doesn't really matter. Yeah, Zaro can be a little bit of a pain sometimes. 
Oh, uh, here we are. There's R3. So, the thing that actually sucks mostly about the Aspirin's Trial is the fact that, oh no, I'm using my Twice Enchanted. Shit. Oh, that sucks, because that's worth a decent amount. Fuck, and I don't want to do this again. That actually sucks. Not much that I can do about it, though. But yeah, so normally this room has, like, some crazy traps going on. You see these lines on the ground, you see the traps that are broken right there. Normally they would be going around, but because of that dark shrine that we got, they're no longer there. So yeah, there you go. Depending on what you do, he drops some um, an ascendancy key, which allows you to open up chests like this. Wow, that was actually pretty good for normal, not gonna lie. And depending on if you do, say, more or less in the trial... Air gloves... Force. That's fine. Oh, I get another use. Yeah, enchant again. Lord of Winter. Cool. Yeah, so now you get your first Ascendant. This is normal difficulty. So, the Ascendant is the only choice for the Scion. But you'll see I only get two points, so I'm only going to get a passive point and 40 strength right now instead of actually getting the Chieftain thing that I want. That's why it's not really worth it on the Scion to do it until you can do the second one as well. But you'll see a couple things here, and the reason I want the Chieftain is the 1% of damage dealt by your totems is leeched to his life, and the 20% chance to cover rare or unique enemies in Ash for 10 seconds on hit. Those are both super strong. The 10% strength, the fire damage, and the life regen are strong as well, but the other thing that I'm going to be going is Deadeye. So this is going to make it so that my projectiles pierce more, and moving while bleeding, sure, whatever, don't, don't take extra damage. Um, it gives me like a mini far shot, and it gives me an additional projectile, right? And some global accuracy rating. The additional projectile is the main thing that matters here. And honestly, I've been thinking about this, but the Deadeye might not even be that great. I think the additional projectile is really good, but I'm sitting here thinking and I'm like, do I really care about that? Like, I could go Hierophant if I really wanted to. But no, Hierophant's not worth it either. I don't think any of those are worth it. I could do this. It'll give me some damage penetration. This will give me Culling Strike. Yeah, I think it's probably just best to stick with the Deadeye. I think the Deadeye is better than the rest of the options that I have there. Alright, so we're gonna apply that and we're gonna go do Cruel Lab. So we have to do one thing before we can get to Core Lab. So we got a point because we ascended. We got our last life point. So now we can actually start getting damage and stop hating ourselves. This is where we actually get a point, right? This is where we actually get something. So open up Labyrinth. Go to Cruel Lab Daily Notes. This Cruel Lab is pretty okay. I'd say it's mediocre. It's not the best. Quite a few rooms. Okay, we're going to the top left. Yeah, as you progress in the different labyrinths, they do get just harder and harder and harder, and all of the aspects about them get harder. Act 5 before you crash, that's pretty good though. I know you said you had to take a while before you were able to download, but um, the, the different- oh, this isn't right. That's left. I guess- oh, I walked right by it. So yeah, forehead. But yeah, um, so as you go through the different labyrinths, so you go from normal to cruel to merciless to uber lab, they get just every aspect of them generally gets harder, right? So um, in normal lab, the traps and Izaro and everything is pretty simple, right? Like there's not very much that you have to dodge. But you'll see here, for example, when you get into the higher labyrinths, they start getting more difficult as you go on. And one of the things about Azaro in particular that makes him kind of a difficult boss is, especially if you're squishy like I am, I've only got 2400 health at level 62, that's not very good. Um, he does a lot of damage, and a lot of his telegraphed attacks do insane amounts of damage. Actually, one of my first videos that I ever made on this channel a long time ago, I don't even know if it's up anymore, one of the first videos that I ever made on this channel years ago was me just randomly dying in hardcore to Azaro. Funny enough, right after that video, um, right before I made that video, and I did, because it was it was Merciless Lab, I think, at the time is what I was doing. Um, right before I did that video, I actually um, I actually just randomly fought a Baxith in Hardcore. Oh, shit. I have no... Yeah, I just ran into a Baxith in Hardcore, and I killed him, but, um, but yeah, I died to a Zaro afterwards, so go me. So, one thing that I'm not really caring too much about is you'll see there's these little plates right here, right? These are pressure plates, and you step on them, and you get arrows shot at you. That's a common thing that people actually don't realize is happening to them. And it's one of the many reasons in Uber Lab that you can die very easily. Because all that you hear is a little click, and you might not realize that you're stepping on that plate. I know there's a way to do this quickly, but I honestly don't care that much, so we're not going to do it. It's like one of those little puzzles where here, I'll, I'll show you real quick. 
Be like, press one switch and it pops the two that are next to it. You know, it's one of those. Yeah, I'm not gonna, not gonna screw around with it. Wait. Oh, I actually thought I had it. Oh, I did have it. No, I didn't have it. Oh no, I do have it. Haha, <laughs> got him. So that's cool. Um, this is level 55. That bow actually might be okay. That might be okay too. Um, it's okay. Got crit chance, but not good. It's better than I expected it to be. It actually had pretty decent stats on it, surprisingly enough. But for such a higher level bow, not really that great. I showed you guys earlier, you can spend one chaos on a bow, and if you, like, look at the right things, you can turn a one chaos bow into, like, a five or ten chaos bow pretty easily. Like, all that I did was find, like, a mediocre DPS bow and just switch it to fi added fizz damage, because that slot was open. I took a one chaos bow, made it five or ten chaos bow. Alright, where the fuck am I going in here? Um, I'm going to the top right is where I need to be doesn't seem right. No, that's the way back. Yeah, I would say for the average player, this is probably one of the harder things that you'll do early on in the game if you do decide to do it. So for someone that hasn't had a ton of experience doing this, and even sometimes for experienced players, this is probably the hardest part about leveling, is getting this done. That's why I generally leave it towards the end. Um, and that kind of compounds on itself as you go deeper and deeper into the into like Merciless Lab and even Uber Lab. A lot of characters never do Uber Lab. Um, most people I would say generally never really get Uber Lab done, so. So don't feel bad if you never get Uber Lab done. A lot of people don't do it. I mean, a lot of characters don't even really need it done, you know? I mean, you don't have to do it. Most characters are fine with just up to Cruel and Merciless Lab. As long as you do those three, you're generally okay. All right, so we're going top right top. Don't be baited by stuff like this, like I really want to just click that without opening it, but you see, freezes you when activated. I'd probably die right there, because it both does cost the ground and freezing. I don't have a freeze flask, so we ain't doing that. So we're going top right right now. Don't get baited into those traps. She got, she got all 39? I thought you ordered her 40. Did she get you baited? I may not even be able to do Merciless Lab right now, to be honest with you. I'll probably try it, but... I might get banged up. Yeah, it's good that she liked it. Alright, I'm going top here. So this is one of the first ones that we've ran into so far with the Labyrinth where there are three exits. One in the middle, one on the left, and one on the right. So this is where it can become a little bit more um, difficult to figure out where you're supposed to go because the paths get a little bit more varied. And if you see something like that, that's a specialty trap. Generally, you don't have to go that way unless you want to get whatever it is, which in this case, it's a labyrinth trove. Until you get to, um, until you get to like Merciless or you get to, um, let's see. Okay, so that is the left side. So we actually have to go to the right more. Until you get to Merciless and much more so in Uber Lab, you really don't need to be doing those things. They aren't, very much worth it like the the average amount of items or anything that you get from one of those generally not that great um uber lab though if you are spending any time in uber lab beyond just your first run through i would say it's quite good to max out those as much as you can and get as many keys and as many items and as many things as you can do because sometimes in lab you'll get this thing called a um that's not right either oh no oh never mind never mind it's right here uh, sometimes in lab, there's none in this one, but there probably will be one in the next one. Um, sometimes in lab you get these things called golden doors where you're forced to go and pick up a key, so you'd have to do those. But thankfully so far, um, we've not needed to do one. So you'll see here, there's a lot more traps in this one compared to the ones that we did previously. It just gets worse as you get onto harder difficulties. So thankfully for my build, these traps are not too big of a deal. I just have to be a little bit careful as I move around. As long as I don't forehead too hard here, I should be good. Yeah, like that poison right there could get me killed very easily. Because if I got hit by that spike right there, I was probably dead. Um, another thing that you'll see that he does, you saw you got that green aura around him. 
that aura when you stand and it teleports you to wherever the green circle is on the floor. So sometimes that can be good. I mean, if you need to get out real quick, you can stand in it, but on average, it's generally not a good thing because it may not put you in the nicest place. But yeah, Izaro is kind of just a fight of just attrition where you're just trying your absolute best to not die for any reason because if you die, you have to restart and just run around in circles if you have to like I'm doing here. I'm just being as safe as humanly possible so I don't have to do this whole thing over again. Ooh, that was a weird slam that he did there. That actually could have gotten me killed if, um, if I wouldn't have dodged it. It's another okay one. So as you get into the higher labyrinths as well, you're going to notice that there's going to be different enchants that you can do now. So I can do gloves or boots, right? So let's enchant these boots. Oh, that's actually a pretty good one. Fire damage if you've killed recently. It's actually really good for my build, too. Now we're getting our first actual real ascendancy point, right? We got the Marauder ascendancy. So, and then we can put the other point in dexterity. So now we can grab Chieftain. This is going to be big for us, right? Let's take a look here. Cannot be chilled, cannot be stunned. Eh, it rages melee damage, so we're gonna go Chieftain. This is what we've been waiting for. So now our totems leech life to us, which is awesome. It's gonna make us a lot more tanky. Okay, and we have to do one more thing. All right, so here's the first actual hard lab that we have. The layout is not that great, and um, damn, that's a pretty bad layout. So this is level 68. This is six levels above my character. My character is not that tanky, so I, I very well might die. I might have to do this like four times before I get it. Okay, so the first thing is a golden door. It's the very first thing that we run into, right? So this is going to be like fighting like map enemies, actually. So this is going to be relatively difficult. I have to be extra careful. I, have I leveled, though. That's good. Um, I guess I'm going to grab Lava Lash. Because I do mainly fire damage at the moment. I need to start getting some damage because I have plenty of life nodes at the moment. So we're going towards the right. Yeah, look at that. I almost just died right there. Just a little random mob. But if we're going to the right... Okay, so here you're going to start to see how the labyrinths are more like a labyrinth now instead of it just being obvious. When you start getting into Merciless and you start, and especially Uber, you're going to notice that they are not as straightforward as they used to be. Okay, so here's the golden doors. You can only choose one of them, right? So we want to choose the right side one, but we have to be at the golden key first, which is generally if it's the first door down here on the left. Now the golden key is always behind some kind of trap mechanism section. Um, it's never just a free thing. You have to go like around a little square and dodge a whole bunch of traps and kill a whole bunch of enemies before you can get to it. You're always going to have to do that. So the comment that I said before about how you generally want to avoid all of this stuff, this is one of those ones that you can't avoid. Okay, I'm frozen. Yeah, I really need resistances. I was very close to a death. Thankfully, I have good flasks, so I didn't die. Yeah, without those good flasks there, without the fast flasks that I have, the seething and the bubbling, I would have 100% been dead. Do you see, there's the golden key right there. And generally, you gotta do like a big wraparound like this to be able to get to it. So this is not the way. But it might actually just be through here. Be careful of those doors, man. I do not have any physical resistance whatsoever. Yeah, here we go. This does not look like it. <laughs> That's the way out. All right, so you see that the traps are ramped up quite a bit here. They're all over the place now. Now, I would not suggest that you go through them this fast if you feel that you are going to die. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, so I kind of just have like the muscle memory built in and I don't really want to die to this thing. But I just kind of have the mus muscle memory built in at this point, which makes it a lot easier. But um, yeah, it's generally not best for uh, for someone that's relatively new to this to just try to just brute force their way through the traps like that. The major thing that will save you in those circumstances is definitely quick flasks. So that means the bubbling and the seething flask. You, you want to make sure that you have those just on hand anytime that you're going through one of those sections. They're one of the best investments that you can make for leveling is getting instant flasks. They're just infinitely better than anything else that you can get. Oh god. Like, if you find that your character is just dying all the time, check your flasks. Don't be like my friend who makes it to end game with one white small life flask, and that's and four and four quicksilver flasks. You know who you are. All right, so we're going to the right again. All right, so these sections can be a little dangerous here because you're forced to go through traps no matter what. But in general, on these, you're better off to go through the blades than standing in the things that stab you, because the things that stab you will do a lot of your health. Oh, he's freezing me. 
Yeah, and if you're Yoin, so yeah. Anything, these are like normal maps, like Yoin Grafer, which is a rogue exile, he can pop up if you're randomly, so. That almost killed me. Remember, I have very, I'm very undergeared for this, so I'm having to like really pay attention to what I'm doing at the moment. So if I make like one wrong move right now because I'm playing both an evasion build and I'm super undergeared, I don't have good resist, I don't have good life, I don't do good damage. If I make even one mistake, which I probably will at some point, I'll just straight up die. So you'll see, this is going to take me a lot longer to kill, and it's much more important that you do the mechanics now. So I think these are fonts, which means that I have to press them as I go around. Oh no, it's damage. This is actually easy for my build. I just drop the ballistas on top of them, and it should take care of everything for me, and I don't even have to worry. I just drop one at each one. So, Izaro has a couple different forms that he can be in, so like right now he's double swords, which is actually one of the two most dangerous ones. Um, he's got, I think, double swords, a two-hander, and then a sword and a shield, and I actually feel like in general the double swords is the most dangerous, and the two-handed sword is probably the least dangerous, right? Um, or the two-handed mace is the least dangerous. The reason that I say that is, is that even though the two-handed mace does a lot of damage, his abilities are very telegraphed. And you can really tell when he's doing them. So... All that you really have to do is just stay away from all his big telegraph abilities, like that big slam that he just did right there, the big slash through the air, that slam. You can do those, you're mostly fine, even on the sword one. He does have a couple abilities that can mess with you, like that, um, that thing that he just put underneath the ground that slows you. Besides that, I mean... You're not really seeing much of it because I'm playing a super easy build to do this with, but... Alright, so now... That was first the Zaro, right? So we need to go to top right now. Okay, so... We just have to figure out where we need to go here. Okay... This switch... That did not work. That opened up something over here, though? It opened up a path to a switch. Oh. We could have just went through anyways. Alright, we are going to top right, so this should hopefully take us exactly to where we want to be. Sanatorium halls... yeah, there's only one direction to go here. So now we need to go to the right again, and that should take us to Izaro. Alright, so this decorative chest right there, that Heart of the Gargoyle, what that item does is this actually interacts with the next Zaro fight that you're going to go to. So this one, for example, we know that Zaro is going to have gargoyles, and the first one that we hit will die instantly. Also, that was really dumb of me to just walk through there like that. I just wasn't paying attention. So you'll see when that first gargoyle spawns, it'll just die instantly because of that item that we have. So if you are having difficulties with some of the fights, you can go and look for those and pick them up. Um, POE Lab will tell you if they're there as well. So you'll see here, whenever this first gargoyle spawns, wherever it is, it'll die instantly as soon as I shoot it. See which one is the first one. Yeah, see? That one right there died pretty much instantly. Okay, so that one's dead now. I actually took a lot of damage there. That was a big risk doing what I did right there. I should not have done it. As I stopped in place for too long. And if he hits me with even a single ability, I'm dead for sure. Like, I might get lucky and dodge it or evade it because of my build, but if if a single like that. If anything connects, I'm just dead instantly. Alright, I'll try it again. So I told you, like, I can I can fuck up in the tiniest little bit. I just walked into that circle of things that he was shooting just accidentally. Instant death. Alright, so we're back at square one now. We gotta do the golden key. So, one thing about having to redo sections, at least, is that you know where you're going this time. So we know that we need to get the golden key. And this can be useful for, say, if you're like farming Uber Lab or something, right? Like, if you're... If you have wrong opinions in life and you think that farming lab is a good thing to do. Path of Exile again? Yeah. You're gonna be getting a lot of Path of Exile from me going forward here. It's a new, um, it's a new League slash expansion that's come out, so... It's gonna be, like, a lot of PoE. So if you don't like PoE, sorry boys. You're gonna have a bad time. This is a spiritual successor to Diablo, so yes, I can see why, uh... I can see why it would remind you of that. It is a- it is the spiritual successor to Diablo 2. Um, this is pretty much all I've done today. I edited a video earlier, and I've been doing alright though. My sleep schedule's kinda screwed up because I, um... Because I decided to stream for 13 hours yesterday. 
but we don't worry about that. Now, I'm not gonna stream 13 hours again today, too. I'm gonna stream for like maybe another two or three hours at most. I said another two or three hours at most, that's like one or two. Chill. Yeah, don't tempt me. Might just stream for 15 hours. I stream for 15 hours tonight, and then, yeah, we'll do it. Hopefully I don't hard end and die here again. To be fair, I didn't even die to something that I knew was being shot at me. I just happened to run exactly where he was shooting the green the green balls of death, so... I dodged all of his actual abilities like that. I just unfortunately didn't have any flasks, so I died. So can you like co-op in this game? Yeah, up to six people. It's um, it's a it's online RPG. It's just like Diablo 2 was. Up to six people in a party, and like um, when you go to town, you'll see you see everyone. Like there's like up to like hundreds of people in town, and you can play with anyone at any time, right? Like you can just join a party and join their hideout, and you're immediately there. Oh god, this is taking a long time. I'm doing in this method so I don't have to deal with, um, bullshit. No! Okay, that was almost a death. Did one of them go off? Ooh. One of them might actually have went off and that's not good. Is it the fire one? Monka S. That's not good, boys. Alright, we're going to the top right. That's really not good that the fire one went off. I didn't think that it went off, I thought I got it. It's really not good. Yeah, as I said before, I am insanely undergeared for this. Like, I'm underleveled, undergear, I'm six levels under the zone, I'm massively undergeared, I, I don't do good damage, I don't have good defenses, I don't have good health. Like, I got nothing, fam, and I, I should not really be doing this right now, but I'm stubborn, and I think that I'm good enough that I can just overpower it, so we're doing it live, boys. Um, so we're gonna go top right again. You know what they say about overconfidence? It is a slow and insidious killer. And in my case, there's probably nothing slow about it. It'll probably be a swift and fast death. Come on, get the fuck out of my way. Move. Alright, we're here again. This is where we died last time. This is on this one. And, uh, the fire one did get through. Oh, that actually sucks because those could kill us. And there's not much that I can do about it. Oh, so that's how those work, huh? Interesting. Yeah, see those things right there? That's actually... Yeah, look at how much damage I just took from that. I do not have good fire resist, boys. Monk of fucking S, dude. No, 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 no. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. Okay. Can we not, please? That really sucks that those spawned like that, by the way. Okay, we're good. Um, so now we do top right and top. Oh wow, someone's already at Delve Depth 200, that's pretty good. Joink easy trick shots. So, top right, top. Alright, so we got one last trial left, and then we're mostly done with Lab. Um, Uber Lab is like a whole nother beast, to be perfectly honest with you. Like, Uber Lab is way, way harder than any of the normal labs by far. I just wasted a whole bunch of potions there. Which that kind of sucks. Yeah, Uber Lab is way more difficult, and you have to do a whole lot more stuff to even get access to it. So we're not even close to having that unlocked. We haven't even unlocked a single thing from it yet, so we're not gonna be doing that. All right, so that's the right way. 
go. Oh, someone got in the maze of the Minotaur. Those don't those don't pop up very often anymore. So we're going top here. I still remember when Jinta got that bug with his thing where these weren't called crushing mass, but they were called crushing ass. What is this song? Oh, I'm not looking. I need to be looking at the. Is this like a remix of Better Off Alone? Is that what this is? It is. Uh, yeah, it absolutely is. Okay. All right, here we go. This is the hard one. Okay. Oh, I thought my game froze. I was about to be upset. So this is the hard one. This is the one where there's traps and everything. Let's see what layout of traps it is. Oh, it's the easy one for me. Good. There's um, there's one with like fire and spinny things going all over the place. It's much, much worse for me. This one is not so bad. I do not mind this one that much. Only thing that I have to be pretty careful about. Oh, and someone got in Pit of Chimera already too. Only thing that is that right there. Oh, and I can't go. <laughs> so that right there is the singular set of circumstances that can just insta kill me. Yeah, is where I get hit by the poison. He slows me immediately afterwards. And I just take the double slow to the face, and it just destroys me. Anything other than that, and I'm mostly okay. Yeah, the, uh, the double slow is a little rough. Kind of hard to deal with. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I got really lucky there that those exploded the way that they did. Very easily could have died. Oh, that was so risky. That was also risky. Zaro. Oh no 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 no! This could kill me. Okay, I used my I used my evasion flask. That's all that I had. Thankfully, I did dodge what I needed to dodge. But oh, this is really bad. This is really bad. Okay. Okay, we did it. We did it. We just have to survive these last little minions. Okay, that was actually way... <laughs> that was actually decently hard. Um, Alright, so I think we only got one key. And we got nothing. So on uh, Merciless and Uberlab, you can enchant your helmet. And the enchants on the helmet are a lot stronger than the normal ones. Like Cobra Lash has 20% increased projectile speed. It's not that great, but... The helmet enchants are far better than the, say, the glove or the boot enchants. I would say that in order of importance, helmet, boots, glove. Alright, so we got our final ascendant point for now. So we're going to be able to be a Deadeye. And yeah, so when we do Uber Lab eventually, we will get one more passive point and we'll get Path of the Ranger. So we'll get three total passive points and we'll be able to start from here instead of having to start from here, which is inefficient. So once we have enough to get rid of all these resists, like this right here, we'll save 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 points. So that 2 points is going to save us 11 points on the tree. We'll be able to get some life over here. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. For lab, now we can get back to mapping, finally.